Sea Salt is an action strategy game that sees you controlling a horde of minions to try and attack and kill mankind. Releasing today in America and next week elsewhere, is it worth considering? Halloween is just around the corner after all. Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy. And now, let's find out. The story of Sea Salt is told via cutscenes in between levels and appears to tell the story of an archbishop that refuses to sacrifice himself when ordered to by the omnipotent being he is serving. This brings a plague of death and misfortune against the local town. You play as a malevolent and unseen apostle, shown on screen only by the presence of a large yellow cursor. The purpose of this cursor, however, is that wherever you aim it, your horde of minions will endeavour to follow. Stopping them from doing so will be a number of barricades or obstacles, and in order for them to pass these, you must press the ZR button whilst hovering over any such obstacle to have your minions attack it and break it down. The main purpose of the cursor though is to direct your horde to attack all humans within each self-contained screen, as killing all humans on a screen is the only way that you can move on to the next, and each level is made up of a good number of these screens. Humans though will of course try to prevent you from doing this from the most basic way, which is running away of course, to fighting back with a variety of weapons. Running humans can be chased, although it's best to resist the temptation to constantly keep the attack button down, as a more effective strategy is to try and surround the human first with your horde and then press attack. Chasing them down, avoiding their attacks and then counter-attacking will see you achieve victory with far more of your minions intact. When you begin, you will have just the most basic of minion to choose from, an average swarm with no real power other than that of sheer numbers. But you will unlock access to other minions as you progress, via these tarot cards. Each new horde has its own strengths and weaknesses, some have lower attack but a better defence, some use ranged weapons, and some have a more support based ability such as raising enemies from the dead to fight alongside you. As you move through the levels, you will occasionally discover these portals and at these times, you can choose a card to add more minions to your horde. As well as this, you will earn coins within levels, either for defeating humans or breaking scenery. And when your money bag is full, you may choose another card and further increase the size of your horde. Your money caps off when the bag is full, so you might as well use it to get a card straight away, as there is no benefit at all in waiting. Soon enough, the humans will begin to use some heavy weaponry against you and you really do need to refrain from being too gung-ho the further you get into the game, as your horde can become decimated pretty quickly. The difficulty can be pretty brutal at these times and if you die you return to the start of the last screen that you entered. If you entered this screen with very few minions and there are no portals in sight, then it could be a pretty tough time moving forward. In later levels, things do become quite chaotic as well, with so many enemies on screen, fireballs being thrown at you, and again you can find yourself being destroyed in next to no time. And at these times, the game did become a little frustrating. At the end of a stage you will fight a boss, and you will need to pay attention to their attack patterns, as they have the potential to wipe you out in seconds if you are sloppy. I liked that it wasn't just a case of overwhelming the boss with numbers, with little regard for collateral damage, and they did actually take some fault, and I actually enjoyed the boss battles more than the stages that got you there in the first place. Successful completion of a level will take you to the map screen, and there are occasional branching paths here, each new level gives you the opportunity to choose which apostle you play as, and as well as affecting which horde of minions you begin with, they each have their own special ability, such as a particular minion being stronger for them, or the strength of your minions increasing when you have fewer in your horde. Only one is unlocked from the start of the game though, and the others can be earned by defeating a certain number of humans with a particular minion, or collecting a set amount of money. Levels are fairly long and do start to feel a bit repetitive, although it does try to prevent this by introducing a new human to fight within a level. The problem with this though, is that once having been introduced, this enemy will then appear for the next 4 or 5 consecutive screens, again bringing back that feeling of repetition. It's also not as easy to be strategic as you might want to be. Even if you have a clear plan for a stage, issues such as your minions getting stuck on on-screen objects, or a lack of being able to command separate units, diminishes this. I appreciate it's a more streamlined action strategy game, but when being attacked by multiple enemies it all starts to feel a bit random as to who your minions will attack at times, removing the control from the player to a degree. Talking of control, the control of your minions via the on-screen cursor works quite well, although there are some issues such as certain minions being faster than others. The issue with this is that when you press attack, 
some of your horde haven't reached you yet, so the rest will just begin to attack wherever they are and won't necessarily join you. It's not as bad as it probably sounds, a minor annoyance I suppose at most, but it is an annoyance nonetheless and again reduces the effectiveness of the strategic part of the game. As well as the main campaign there is also an arena mode. This sees you having to survive waves of enemies and can be played on the setting of any of the levels you have beaten so far. After each wave you can pick a new minion to join your horde and this is a fun distraction, some might even prefer it to the main game mode. Gameplay is fairly unique, although the random nature of your minions and chaotic design of later levels makes strategizing difficult, leading to frustration, and it receives 12 out of 20. Controls are simple enough, although a couple of design choices can make it awkward to get your minions where you want them to be, and they receive 13 out of 20. Visually, the game opts for a pixel art style, using simplified character sprites reminiscent of 8-bit, but with backgrounds way too complex to have been possible on such a system. The mood is eerie and macabre, as you would expect given the subject matter, with a suitably dark and grimy colour palette to match. Greys, browns, greens and blacks set the tone with the gothic architecture of the town set against the desolate state of the shacks near the dock and the foreboding image of the ships in the background. There are a few different locations such as farms, the docks and forests as well as the main town and while some of the effects were very effective some became a little bit overused and therefore lost this effectiveness over time. The first time your eyes adjusted to the fact that yes they were bodies you could see swinging from ropes in the villages is quite shocking but seeing them in most screens afterwards just desensitizes you a little too quickly. The minions are all interesting and I like the drawings on the tarot cards. Some of the minion sprites are quite difficult to distinguish and it can be hard at times to tell which characters are minions and which are humans, especially when you start using minions such as spectres that can resurrect fallen enemies, plus a couple of times I ended up losing my minions because I couldn't tell what I was attacking. I thought that this was a flame throwing human, but it was a sentry unit and I lost a lot of the horde. It just wasn't distinguishable enough due to the graphics unfortunately. That being said, it is quite creepy seeing your weird menagerie of demons and monsters make their way across the screen, and some of the effects, such as this scene of lightning flashes culminating with the windmill catching on fire, were quite cinematic. Audio wise, there is some ominous sounding organ music during the map screen. Within the levels themselves, the music is quite dark and does a good job of supporting the atmosphere although I must admit it's hard to hear when playing on the big screen, and I only really got to appreciate it fully when playing in handheld mode with headphones in. Other than this, the game employs the use of sound effects, and generally all you will hear is the sound of humans screaming as they run away, some sloshy sounds as they are killed, and the sounds of various weaponry. Some of the minions sound quite creepy, the clicking noise made by the crabs was quite unsettling, and generally music does its job to a decent standard. Graphics look good on first glance and certainly get the macabre atmosphere across, but a lack of variety between settings and some occasional difficulty in distinguishing between sprites means they score 13 out of 20. Music is dark and brooding, although it is overpowered a little bit by the sound effects, but scores 14 out of 20. Sea Salt costs £13.49, €14.99 Euros or £14.99, and you are getting an adventure with pretty lengthy levels, branching paths and an arena mode. There are a variety of minions to choose from and new apostles to unlock too. The problem is the sense of repetition that sets in very early on, and I never found myself playing more than two levels in one sitting because of this. I think £9 or $12 Euros would have been the sweet spot, but you are getting a decent amount for your money nonetheless, and it scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Sea Salt is an interesting idea and offers fun in short bursts. It is let down slightly by a few design choices, and although I liked the dark and ominous art style, it isn't varied enough throughout the game and did make it a little too difficult to distinguish things at times. There is a decent, albeit frustrating, game here, and it had potential to be even better, but there is still a good time to be had here and would certainly be worth picking up should it go on sale. Sea Salt gets a switch up score of 67%. Many thanks everybody as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support. If you would like to join them, the links are down below. And to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>